Today, we look at boxing's first ever lightweight world champion. How good was the Napoleon of the Ring, Jack McAuliffe? On March 24, 1866, Jack McAuliffe was born in Cork, Ireland. He and his parents migrated to the United States in 1871. McAuliffe stood 5 feet 6 inches. He had an aggregate weight of 138 pounds for his career. He is most associated with the lightweight division which ranged from 127 to 135 pounds during his time. McAuliffe's career spanned from 1885 to 1897. He had 27 wins, 0 losses, and 10 draws. 19 of his wins were by knockout. His win percentage was 72, and his knockout percentage was 51. McAuliffe holds the record for the third longest reign as lightweight champion at 6 years, 7 months, 12 days. McAuliffe was known as a shifty fighter with great reflexes during his time. He was known to have great endurance and fought in several long fights extending well beyond the typical round limits. He was also noted to have a great left jab and carried power in both hands. He was an early practitioner who brought a scientific approach to his boxing. McAuliffe's first notable fight came on February 27, 1886, when he knocked out Jack Hopper in the 17th round to win the American lightweight title. McAuliffe would knock out Bill Fraser in the 20th round of their October 28, 1886 contest in a fight reported by some sources as the American lightweight and the inaugural world lightweight title fight. On January 14, 1887, McAuliffe knocked out Harry Gilmore in the 28th round of their Hour Plus Barn fight in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Some sources also reported this fight as being for the inaugural world lightweight title. McAuliffe's next big test came on November 16, 1887, when he took on the UK's Jim Carney near Boston, Massachusetts. The vacant world lightweight title was on the line per sources. The fight lasted over five hours. McAuliffe got off to a fast start, taking an early lead on Carney, who battled ferociously. As the fight slowed down in the later round, Carney started to get the better of McAuliffe, dropping him multiple times. In the 74th round, after McAuliffe was dropped for a third time, supporters of McAuliffe's stormed the ring and the commotion brought a halt to the contest. While both fighters claimed to be victorious, the fight was ultimately ruled a draw, with McAuliffe retaining claim to the World Lightweight Championship. McAuliffe would participate in another extended contest when on February 13, 1889, he put his title on the line against Billy Meyer. The two men would trade blows for over four hours and 64 rounds before the fight was declared a draw, with McAuliffe retaining his title. After defeating and drawing with Billy Meyer in two 1892 contests, the former being on the same card as John L. Sullivan's loss to James J. Corbett for the world heavyweight title, McAuliffe's stiffest test of all would take place on August 27, 1894, in New York, when he took on Hall of Fame featherweight young Griffo of Australia. Griffo came into the fight having only lost twice in 140 bouts. Griffo, known to have a great defense, lost a controversial decision to McAuliffe over 10 rounds. Griffo is reported to have thwarted the majority of McAuliffe's offense, who was the bigger man in the fight, by over 10 pounds. McAuliffe would fight once more in 1894, before retiring as world lightweight champion. McAuliffe would make a brief comeback in 1896, picking up three wins and two draws, before retiring for good in 1897. McAuliffe faced two Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against Hall of Famer Jim Carney, Billy Meyer, and Hall of Famer Young Griffo. Jack McAuliffe died on November 5, 1937, at 71. While McAuliffe isn't a widely known name, he did play an essential part in the sport's growth. His legacy was cemented by him becoming the first world lightweight champion and his prowess as a skilled boxer in the time of pugilistic growth. McAuliffe was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1995.